Hello and welcome to my coding session. This is a project about Bokeh Manager, a user for JavaFX application for managing XML files which are consisting of satellite information about channels. And I mean about TV channels. So let me just point quickly the situation which I am currently having in my project. Now I proven that I can that my software can read satellites in, information about satellites and now I'm considering to write another class for reading information about services so following uh, is about services services it is another XML file which use the satellite receiver dbox2 and this file consists not only information about TV channels, but uh, it consists information about radio channels, satellite radio channels. Currently, I'm not considering of managing uh, inform uh, information about radio channels. Uh, maybe when the when the project is complete, I would consider to write additional stuff for managing radio channels. So currently I am only specialize my software for managing TV channels because who, who listen to satellite receiver when you have a computer and so on. So basically this is uh, for the future thinking. So let me just point out uh, how it how it goes. So after satellite receiver created generated the data I have following view I have one information about satellites and the information about channels which are uh, which were scanned by the satellite receiver and now I'm considering about the object uh, behavior and relations between two objects in such in in which way should it be should it be done and basically it is following so for example why i doing this right now because i need to make i need to make sure that my data structure are consistent so on one side I have services and uh, services consist of information about channels. I, I did repeat it many times but let's just look at the attribute and which of the attributes are uh, can be notified. So I have here for example in services the satellite receiver name is the same as in the satellite. And the position in is it it is uh, not it is rather large than short. We have here four numbers and I have here two numbers. The dice configuration it is unique value of the services. But I clearly see here things like. Uh, Sirius and uh, position. Uh, I mean, the sat name is the same and position. The transponder ID. Transponder ID is a unique value, such thing as uh, onit. What is onit? Onit is a hexadecimal representation of following. You see. And it stays for original network identification. So, and this value should be always converted. If a user, if user input data in form of decimal, I need to convert it to the hex. And this hex value actually, actually what i'm thinking about this it can it consists following view but i don't need this 
zero x i just need zero 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 one and so on so if we look it up here for example i don't know uh, service id let me just go to the link sat mm, and i make my case clear link sat this is a site from which you can get uh, icons for the satellites uh, i mean for the channels now i need to pick a proper land and just let me just think about sirius was uh, let me just look it up see Sirius probably i know it was it uh, it was it was renamed so to make me to make it show let me just uh, look at degrees at which the satellite exists one a astra one a so i'm looking for the astra one a astra one and need to look it up Astra 1A, Astra 1, 2G, let me, let me just look it up this data, because I didn't look it up this data previously, and if you ask me why am I doing this, uh, I need to understand the relations between two data structures, which uh, uh, one is uh, which I uh, <laughs> which I uh, I already already created, and another one is uh, what I actually need to create. So Astra for A. So Astra for A. It is the satellite which I'm looking for. Europe. Uh, I don't think this is, will be appropriate. Europe Astra for A. No man is not right. Let me look it up. Astra for A. Uh, did it found it? Okay, so this is a satellite. And now what i need to look it up i need to look i need to go back to my whiteboard and here we go so for example i'm looking for the channel i don't think this is a really good example here tv tv sport extra hd tv for a sport extra hd V4. Let me just close not needed stuff. TV4. Did I it's misspelled? Probably. Let me just pause. Okay, so I have found um, I have found one channel. So this is how the satellite receiver saves all the all the values. And just look it up, news one. News one. I just need to look it up. Ah, here's it. Here's it. So this is actually this column SR. I need on it on it the ID. And let me just. So this is on it on it of six five one two. So let me just look it up in the representation and you see here here's a different representation so i have i, I need to be cautious that i'm saving here uh, the service id in the proper uh, format no not the service id sorry uh, that on it on it is zero zero five five this is uh, not a decimal representation, this is a hexadecimal. Uh, let just me check it. So this is the value which I 
output and that is zero and one nine seven zero I'm not sure this is the right one nine seven uh, I'm pretty puzzled so basically what I need hello I'm back so once again after some consideration of evaluation of this table I came to conclusion that I'm having here here the first the first uh, the first line here in this column which I'm market right now trying to, to mark is that here at this at this column the first values in green are on it and the ID transport identification and basically here for for my case which I'm trying to explain use one I need to go to this and just type news one oh, I probably news one so, so here's this channel and the 85 is on it and let me just show you so on it is original network identification and now I need to say following so you see they are speaking here about hexadecimal value so the actual value here is in hexadecimal form and when I write my services class I need to consider this at any time and positions that I am creating here actually hexadecimals hexadecimals and this is basically this is uh, important to know and I think it's that I will not validate this data in my services XML but let me just go quickly and test it out my idea so the channel is news 1 85 I'm typing here 85 and this is exactly 55 55 is a hexadecimal value and this is actually what I'm this uh, actually having here in the transponder so basically why it's so important you say uh, let me just say following so at some point the user need to update the channel settings information so he know that some channel did change his uh, information they I don't know the channel information did change it and you need to change it in your data structure so if the user input decimal I need to calculate the hex representation of this value and this is what about important about on it so on it is representing representing actually let me just do it in black on it represent actually a hexadecimal value of the channel and next thing which I need to consider I have here frequency and you can clearly see from for example here I have here frequency and this frequency is corresponding to to the frequency in the I don't know what have you here in version 2 it's like in a polarization 0 polarization 0 I thinking this is it can be here yeah can be here so fake in a 3 so I have corresponding values for, of my satellites so some values sure I need to read the services XML but later in development I need to consider that 
services services uh, class have need to check it out if you need to find a satellite with the corresponding frequency and the thick inner and polarization and what symbol rate it should find symbol rate thick inner polarization frequency then uh, you have here sat name one two three four five values such values should be equal and should be found in the appropriate satellite if he did not found it he should add this information to the set satellite but basically at the beginning at the start you don't you don't the services don't do not have a don't have a, a need to be to know about satellite objects so this is only I need this information only when I have to change my satellite objects or object better to say so and probably if I if I have so each satellite actually I have three satellites and I have three services objects and probably I have here the connection like one to one the one one satellite object can only have one services object and these services objects should correspond to the appropriate satellite name so let me just re re repeat again what I'm actually trying to tell you I have a services object which has the name Sirius this information this object should correspond to the object Sirius Astra in the satellite object so the dependency is as follows if I change services and if I add an information about new channel this information should be verified in the satellite and if the satellite do not do not find it it should it should it should add this information to the satellite info object to the appropriate set info object so I hope I didn't confuse you but such things I, I need to make it understanding what is the relation between of two data structures so at per, per default these classes should load separately from the given data but later on I when I when I add a new information this information should be checked before it can be added to my satellite information object and it should be added then in the in the services but first of all I need to load my services information into my service model class so it it can it is can it can be tricky what i'm actually did told you but as i said earlier i need to i need to make sure that i am that i have a consistent data so at any point if i add a new channel to the services list it should check it do i have in the services this channel 
if if I don't have this, uh, if I don't have this new channel in my services list, it should add it to the services list, and after that, now it 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 adds to the services. Mm, it adds this information only if it did not found the same channel in the list in the, in the services list and after that it should verify do I have the information in satellite to make actually able to access this channel uh, from from the list so basically I'm bubbling through, but it is a very important thinking uh, process. So services should consist unique channel information. If it does, it shouldn't consist uh, the same information which it had previously. So no, no, rep no channels with the one and the same name should be should be available. But the equality should be checked not only by the name, but with the other values. Because probably you will have the case that you have uh, different channels, but with the same name, like uh, channel 5. I know channel 5, it's not only in Ukraine, but it in other countries available too. So, uh, so you have cases where you have more than one channel with the same name so in, in, in this case I need to make I need to make sure that this information does not repeat and probably what I do I'm actually I will make sure that services object the service object consists one and only one information about channels which belongs to one satellite and in the satellite I'm already have done so I have when I instantiate my satellite model it creates a set of satellites set info objects so basically this, I think this would be enough for my an initial initialization of the further development of my project. I need to create my services. Services model creates a sets, maybe not sets. Uh, let me just go quickly to the, not to this picture I think. So, It's the same it is the same thinking process I have unique elements and by elements I mean my services so one service is a representation of channels for one special satellite so this information should not be repeated so elements are unique in that in that meaning and the order basically I'm thinking this is maybe maybe the same case let me just uh, quickly go through my class uh, which I have created previously set model and set model what actually set model consists sorted new tree set I, I'm using three set. Okay, so I'm, I'm using three set. And what about three set? Sorted li sorted set. Okay, so I do not use uh, sorted set. I use three set. But let me just click quickly to remind it. Three. Three map three set natural order slower sorted 
and what I'm actually getting as an output let me just quickly go to the test I need to only I need to test only one contest content contents exactly so let me just execute it so it sorts it sorts the names but bird serious almost the same stuff but does it apply to my satellites XML I don't think okay so it actually sorts uh, alphabetically the satellites Astra 90 East Hotbird and Sirius okay so it doesn't matter right now but I will do the same the same data structure for my services basically because it because it has uh, at some point same attributes so basically it is <laughs> a well established road to my goal and now once again once again important important thinking wise when I create my services and I uh, initialize the services objects and when the user at some point have a need to add a new channel to my services list I first I need to verify that at my given uh, services list uh, I do not have any repeated repeating repeating uh, services ch channel repeating channels so I have unique values in my services object so this is very important if I did added this information to my services now at the next at the next the next move will be I mean first of all I am checking the uniqueness in my services second I need to make sure that a given information have um, has been not been presented by the satellite so the satellite probably in this case won't would not consist the information needed to make the services channel to appear in the list and I need as a result to add this information to my satellite information object and this will be pretty sophisticated stuff but I have I will write my tests and I did thought about it in in like in advance and I need actually to know that I need to do to make some conversion when user enters um, the data for my own it so you see the complexity is increasing in my project but I think I can deal with it and now let me just do following I will probably I see a timer I have almost 30 minutes um I will simplify the stuff at first so I just need to write new test new G unit G unit basically you can I can use it from here or I just can use a class and add the data from my previous stuff let me just use it like this I have a class and basically what I will do I just will write here set services test 
set services test. All right, so here I have my class and I need to add some information to make sure that it will be seen as my JUnit test. I need my assertions and things like this. And I need my I mean need my stuff to make sure that it will be seen as a test. J unit test. Alright, so and the first will the first test will be like this. I need to test if sat set uh, services services object exists. The services object will represent a JDOM document which consists of services point XML. And now I just need to make sure that I'm doing this. And I mean that I am creating this object. So let me just kill kill this. And now such so do I have the spelling right? Services. Yes, of course. Spelling is very important for me. And I need to make sure that I'm here having here the right stuff. Yeah, it looks almost the same, but document that will be used later. Let me just do it like this. And yeah. So and I need to create here set services. Let me just quickly check it. Set model set set services. I need to declare it. Now I can do it like this. And this should be almost sufficient for my failing test. Now I need to pinpoint to my services. Refactory name. Save it. And just copy the name. And I think I have my failing test. I see clearly that I am failing. So before each run runs always before the units in the unit test are executed. So it's like a constructor for my um, for my object which I always create before I run my test. I always create the SAT services object before I run the test. And the order of my tests is in random. I, do, I have no control about the order of my tests. And this is how it should be tested, actually. Okay, so now I need to execute it. And this should fail. Yahoo! It did fail. And now I need to create a ticket here and in the model models package I create the class class name is set services and now I just need to to, to add the import and here you go I have once again 
runnable runnable test and and it works and I think should have write another test no basically basically it goes at the same to the same path now I need to I need to verify that I can read the file let me just put it quickly here like this and then here I need to make it sure that I'm doing the right testing if set model I have not set model set services can read a JDOM document a JDOM document a JDOM document mm, to, so cannot read a DOM JDOM document now I just need to copy it set model set services object services okay let me just cut it and and post here so right so I need to add read and set up a JDOM document and my assertions probably assertions yeah, like this and I need all of those exception classes like this now and you see I have actually it is an interesting thing uh, I am actually not doing so much work I just repeating the pattern which I have previously used in, uh, when I created my set model uh, set model class and now I need just to execute it and basically when it when it works then, then it works so you need test yep I have a failing test and I need to read and set up a JDOM document right create a method in set services object so I have here the method now it is almost 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 uh, the same code as in set model let me just quickly ah, forgot uh, I need to add here some stuff or sucks XML so same plumbing um, set exception it used freedom document creator mm, do I need this right now do I need this right now read and set up set model no I don't need this right now so I do think that I am Exception catch close, remove catch close, replace catch in the mission will. Ah, because I did not yet created this method here. Yeah. Let me just save it. So, all right. So I just need to copy this code and use it in such services. And. I need to make sure that I am working this All right so I need to I need to create this document check if the JDOM document was created and I need I need this method too okay so first of all I need to go through with this setter 
Just let me just copy this from the model. And sure, I need to specify what type of JDOM document I have to use. And actually, I'm looking for this. And actually, I just need to look for. be it should be here let me just ah here it is the same plumbing uh, now I need to write my get on setter here Getter on setter. So I have my getter on setter. Okay, and now check if JDOM document was created. I need this method. Let me just go here. Then and I think this is a private method. Private method, pretty simple. If the document is created, I have boolean result. If not, boolean false. So, and this is private. I don't need to test it out. It's basically a construction code to get it through. To get it through. Now, now let me just iterate what I have done. Uh, let me just it should go away read and set JDOM document ah okay so I just forgot to uh, to, to give a proper name now it should okay so basically I added to my to my set services class Actually, I'm looking at it and then <laughs> I need to write a model. Model it should be, <laughs> I need to do some refactoring. But let me just quickly run my test. It should, it should actually pass. Let me just run my test first. Yahoo! And it's passing. Well, I don't like. Um, I don't like the name of my class. I don't like it. I rename it set services model. And now I just click finish. And it should rename the name of this class. And Okay, and now it should uh, it did rename it here, and in my test it is rename it to set services model, set services model. All right, so this is uh, this is actually good naming notation, and when I run my test. And when I and when I run my test, it should pass. So I can read my services, and I can I can I'm actually yeah I'm actually I can access JDOM document and setting up a JDOM document. Let me just close need not needed stuff. So testing if set service can read a JDOM document. So let me just think about set services model.
so I can set get set shade dump document. Uh, let me just um, rename it because in this case I'm getting. Um, let me just think about set J DOM document set services. Need to rename it. Re refactor. Rename. I getting here set services J DOM document. I'm always I like to make my things obvious. I don't like it when it's uh, not can be read it. Set get set. Let me just refactor this. Rename. Get set services JDOM document. And the same go goes to my setup. Set set JDOM set set services JDOM document. Oh, did I forgot to refactor it? Refactor rename and this is what I'm actually need to achieve. I'm g getting a setting the Sphinx and and I can run my tests. And basically, for the test, I have it does not change anything. All test pass. Alright, so basically, let me just quickly uncomment one stuff. Add contents. Do I have here? Set model test. So basically, I have not so much work, uh, I mean, for this services class. Mm, and this will be basically the almost, almost uh, the same code, but for um services xml uh, let me just find this contents contents ah here it is i need to uncomment this now i can ra run my all, all i can run all of my tests but here it here it goes like this mine set services model he loads uh, services XML given given services XML and then I make sure that I can access this document so basically here I'm getting hold of my JDOM document which I have read from the previously created class and this is actually how I, I, I like it, mm, how it should be done. And of course, all, all of the previously mentioned corner cases will be implemented. I always think about corner cases, but let's uh, let's write the simple stuff first because it's pretty quickly. Now. I can run all of my tests and nothing should fail and now let me just run all of my tests maybe test as this should go pretty well mm, okay so model test, sub model, sub services test. Uh, okay, thirty tests, build success. But I previously mentioned <coughs> that I should rename some stuff. Let me just rename it. Set services refactor rename. Set services model test. Now. Now I have better situation. Let me just run it. I 
Okay, so you clearly see I running all of my tests, all passing, all working. That's it. And I think I'm finished for today. But I would say this goes pretty pretty fast because nothing should me should stop me for the further development because most of I think most of the work which I have created in my first class set model that was the hard work but another things which will happen later it is uh, understanding of relation of the objects currently I am developing serve my set services model as a separate entity and this should be sufficient for the further development of my project so thank you all and till next bye bye